Welcome to the Scale Model World Podcast. I'm David Howell from Toro Models, your co-host with... Wayne Green from the World of Wayne. The Scale Model World Podcast. Uh, well, um, I say welcome to the uh, to podcast, uh, everyone. Um, I think we'll sort of kick off uh, uh, this one with, um, I guess, what we've all been up to uh, up to this week. Um, I think we we like to sort of uh, talk about uh, what uh, what sort of our modelling uh, lives uh, sort of look like. Um, for me, um, it's been a bit of a mixed bag, to be honest. Um, I've been getting the um, I get the tumbler up to date. Uh, that's pretty much uh, finished now. Um, a few um, uh, dodgy moments with a wheel, which was on the backwards. <laughs> but, but hey, there you go. Um, but that's uh, I was doing that, and uh, oddly enough, I've been spending lots of time um, uh, watching YouTube videos. Um, I'm doing a, a, a diorama for um, Scam Model World in November, and yeah. I've been learning about uh, how, to pro- how to paint zombies. Um, wow. Yeah, <laughs> and what all that involves. Um, lots of sort of dead skin and bone, that kind of thing. What the techniques are, that kind of thing. But thank God for YouTube, as I, that seems to be where I learn all my my sort of uh, uh, techniques um and i've been getting um, um and a star wars at ready as well i mean i'm doing a, a small diorama uh, around uh, an at as well so yep. i've been doing um doing that so it's kind of been of uh, a quite a mixed bag but i quite like to mix it up you know a bit of scale modeling plastic scale modeling bit of a uh, bit of part working as well when they come in um otherwise i end up disappearing under a sea of boxes <laughs> if i don't sort of keep up to keep it up to date as much as possible um although i have on purpose been um i think i mentioned last time uh waiting um for all the mods i want for uh for the uh for, for night Rider before i actually start yeah so i have everything in place uh, now i think i've got one more thing i want to want to come um and then that's kind of it. Um, but uh, um, oddly enough, we're talking about mods, and we'll talk about that uh, about uh, that in in a second. Um, so, uh, so for you, what's what's the week been like? What have, what have you been up to? You'll be surprised at how coincidental some things are. Okay, because yeah. I, I haven't mentioned this to you. Okay, so last well, week, obviously, we were doing the alien build from Agora Models, so that's that's yep, now me. available. If you're in the UK, that's from Hashet Partworks. If you're in the US, it's from Agora Models. Uh, and I've been sourcing some material to actually stick magnets to rubber. And because super glue don't cut it. So uh, I found this really good stuff uh, called, I've actually got it in front of me here. It's called a storm shore, which is brilliant for, yes. <laughs> for putting metal to rubber. So that's what I've been doing now. I've been moving the workshop around because I've got a great big laser engraver cutter coming in. So uh, mm. you'll notice mm. on my videos that the background's changed. And you mentioned in the attack, God, how coincidental is that? So what I was planning to do is I can get hold of an old Kenner attack. You remember the oh, old, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 I've got, indeed, I've got yes, someone who, who doesn't want it and he's happy to give it to me. Uh, and I okay. was actually going to start modding it and making it a little okay. bit more, lot less toy-like and more, you know, yeah, yeah. changing the lights out, putting some uh, uh, better guns at the front, uh, getting a whole full paint job on it. And I'm wondering how that would look. So uh, I don't know if that's hmm. what people on the channel want to look like, but I was going to take some of these old Kenner toys and see what we can do if uh, you put a modeling flare on it. Well, memory serves the the Kenner's quite. It's it's quite it's substantial. It's quite large. It uh, is the Kenner, big time. Um, yeah, you know, it's that's it's not a, it's not, not a small model. <laughs> um, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, trying to sort of kit bash that. Yeah, um, that kind of thing. Um, because that's uh, that sort of yeah, that kind of throws back to the early days of modelling. Uh, you 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 sort of kind of rolled your models in some spare parts just yeah. to give it some some texture. Um, no, definitely. Old, um, you know, but I didn't realize I didn't realize the world of spare parts out there because anything that's missing from these things they're normally readily available on the eBay. You haven't got to buy the mm-hmm. whole thing. Yeah. They've got they've got the yeah, missing indeed. parts. I was like, oh wow, okay, let's do this. <laughs> well, that that's the thing. I mean, I, I mean, scale modeling itself and uh, what we're doing with sort of big scale modeling. It's it's. Um, I mean, that is quite a. Um, a focused way of building a model, but there's lots of other stuff out there. Yeah, scratch yeah. builders do some very interesting stuff. I I, I feel. Yeah. Um, but it's how far do you want to push that? Do you want to sort of amalgamate the two together? Can you can can you take a toy and make that more into a model? Um, because I've had conversations with my sort of modeling buddies uh, at uh, my uh, local IPMS uh, group, um, and that conversation comes up a great deal. When does a model suddenly become a toy, and when does a toy become a, a model? Is it about yeah. detail or is it about scale? That's an interesting conversation. Yeah, I think, uh, well, I mean, that's a definitely a conversation to have in the future, but it's definitely got to be one of these. If, you, if, you, if you're playing with it more, it's a toy. <laughs> if you're looking at toy. it more, it's a model. <laughs> <laughs> 
I always thought scale modeling was all about the small. You know, how, yeah. how can we get these things as small as possible? And you kind of get rewarded for building stuff that is is minute. You yeah, know, it's tiny. But on um, the same, on get... the same, on, on the same thing, you could actually build a large model, but you're focusing on the small details, the things that you wouldn't normally have yeah. on there. Yeah. So you know, Absolutely. small is definitely the way to go. I have spoke to people that feel um, anything sort of bigger than probably one eighth is a toy. Um, I mean, you can get one twelfth scale, um, you know, plastic kits. Um, yeah. There's a few that are, uh, there's a Bugatti, I believe that's uh, that's out at the moment. Okay. Lots of F1 cars. Um, but is is the scale? Does it make it more toy like when it's when it's complete? Uh, whereas most most of the car models, for instance, are one twenty fourth. Yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting one. I, I haven't done a one twelfth. I may do. Um, but I'm kind of more about taking one twenty fourth and packing in the detail. Yeah. Um, yeah, that kind of thing. So I don't know. It's it's something I think we'll return to when I've had to actually got something to compare it to. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people commenting on the subject. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, I may do uh, the same car in two different, uh, uh, you know, twenty fourth and in twelfth. Yeah. And just see how the see how the experience felt. Did it did it feel right? <laughs> if that's the right word. Yeah, as a twelfth, was it? Does it feel right as a as a twenty twenty fourth? It's it's a weird one. Uh-huh. Um, but I'll, uh, we'll, we'll we'll return to that. I think when when I've got some something something to compare it to. Uh, yeah. So I think it's it's kind of one of those. Well, if you haven't tried, have a go uh, and, and just just see how you feel about uh, about the about the model. I was going to say the worst thing that can happen is I'll be left with an at that um, I want anyway. So well, <laughs> that's right. That, absolutely. Yeah. That's that, that's that. I mean, you, hopefully, you you, know, you, uh, you can strip off what you put on if it doesn't look it doesn't look right. Yeah. No, definitely. <laughs> It's 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 one of those. It's going to be a you know, a massive um, uh, research job. You know, what yeah. goes where, and can you can you duplicate the parts? Because the I say the the Bandai I put together, it's massively detailed. Really, well, I've, I've only um, ever done it once before. If you see that C three PO behind me, that was a toy which I opened yeah. up, repainted, mm. put electrics in it. So you know, it's uh, it can be done, but you know, we will have to see. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, indeed. Um, now, uh, time for news, everyone. Um, Scott, I think there's a few things happening in the in the world of uh, big scale models uh, from good old Agora. Uh, they seem to be uh, quite uh, quite active uh, uh, this uh, this week. I think early in the week, I think I tro- uh, last week I, I tripped over the um, uh, Optimus uh, video. Uh, yeah, that looked uh, amazing. Being, uh, Absolutely being amazing. unboxed. Yeah, um, I mean, you quite you kind of then get a feel, don't you? you get a feel for the scale, also the base. The base yeah. looks uh, looks pretty substantial uh, yeah. as well. Looking at the uh, looking at the video. Um, I don't know if you had a good reaction to that. You thought, well, I'm really looking forward to building that because for me, it's not for me, but you quite you quite fancy that. Oh, I do big time. I, I mean, I love that generation of uh, Transformers as well. I do. Uh, I am a Wear Fan Home are releasing their um, Michael Bay version, but I've seen the Indeed. Michael Bay version standing up as well. It's just too busy for me. And, and uh, you know, when I think of Optimus Prime, I think of the the, the Generation One version, the version that uh, Agora is bringing out. It's uh, hmm. that's that's Optimus yep. to me. So uh, it's going to be a real fun build. I can't wait to get packed too, that's for sure. Well, it's horses for courses, um, I think, with yeah. uh, with that one. Um, maybe it's a gen- maybe it's generational. Maybe it's uh, yep. That's basically how old you are. We'll decide yeah. which model you build. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that kind of thing, um, which I think has always been the case. Uh, the model making is, uh, I think, it's certainly generational. Whatever yeah. each generation kind of wants to build, um, particularly big scale models. It's it's well, yeah. I guess which which one you you have a emotional attachment to uh, if it's um, if it's the you know, the, the cartoon series or, or the or the movies. Yeah, so it's, no, it's definitely. Entirely entirely uh, entirely up to you but saying that i mean i've been building models that i i uh, is before my generation it's like uh you know these 2001 models that i've been building yes. the, the the aries the, 1b and stuff it's like that's before yeah, my yeah. time why, why would i be liking that but you know you, you do you do um i don't know you go back to these generations and watch shows and stuff like that and there is a even star trek the original star trek yeah, you know that's that's yeah. a, I, that, that came out before i was born it's like, it's like why, why would i be interested oh, in that but no i really am i love it or well, maybe generational thing is it's a, it, it is absolutely an element, um, but maybe it's real about what shows you came across when you were younger, when you, you know your formative years, you know, whatever whatever yeah. you were watching when you were twelve. Frankly, Definitely, that's yeah, that's that, that's it. You've so, put the nail on the head there. Yeah, so whatever you're looking at twelve, that's that's going to be the stuff. And for for me, it was it was a real mix because I was looking at this the other day. Oddly enough, uh, mm-hmm. again another coincidence. Um, I was looking at uh, you know, the stuff that was um, sort of not 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 out, but just repeated, and it was a ton of stuff. It was everything, all wow. you know, all the Irwin Allen stuff, yeah. Voices of the Bottom of the Sea. I absolutely loved uh, you know this kind of stuff. Land of the Giants, I loved all of that. Yeah, um, a show called The Invaders, which was I which remember was, that, uh, um, which was <laughs> a great deal. That that kind of thing, and you know th- these shows did spawn 
a fair few a fair few model kits. Um, well, some of them are turning into uh, sort of collectors' items, frankly. <laughs> that vintage uh, now, I think, David. <laughs> well, uh, it's it's one of those that really that's going to cost me quite a lot of money to get one of those. Um, and would I build it, uh, or is that my pension? I don't I don't know. Uh, it, it's one of those. But there's, there's a ton of that stuff, which is which is really interesting. Um, I think. Now, actually, talking of uh, say Optimus Prime from from Agora, um, they've been quite busy, haven't they? Um, they have. I, 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 I think I got an email from them uh, recently. Um, the uh, Corvette Stingray is um, yep. he's here. Wow, yep. that looks amazing uh, with its uh, its sort of bare metal finish. It looks absolutely stunning. Yep, I've done the pack one of that already on the channel, so uh, that's that's looking really good. But the um, they have got another release coming now. It's either this week or next week. And I have been teasing it on my uh, on my on my social media, but believe me, I'm so cryptic. No one's going to get it. <laughs> well, um, we will uh, wait and see how that uh, that turns out. Uh, mm-hmm. If anyone, yeah, we knew what that was, but we were going to tell you. But, but there you go. <laughs> um, and of course, the the big uh, I guess the big news from Agora is uh, they have given us some details about uh, the the first James Bonds. Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, DB5 and the and the and the Lotus, which oddly enough are the two that I want to build. Yes, uh, of definitely. All of the cars, definitely. Uh, those are the two that I would absolutely pick uh, to to build. So um, whether they're going to come out uh, simultaneously or or in sequence, I don't know. So I may be building both of those uh, at the at the same uh, same time. Um, but the DB5 in particular, I was very keen on because I I thought when um, the original Eagle Moss had disappeared, I wondered if they took take it off the market. Um, yep. you know, General Craig had just finished, I think, his run. And I thought, I wonder if they're going to redesign that as Daniel Craig's a DB5. They yep. re-release it. That's where I thought. And mm. it didn't happen. Mm. Um, and then here we are a couple of years later. And obviously, we, we heard that uh, Agora were, uh, were looking up to get the um, uh, get the licenses for, for the James Bond cars. Yeah. Um, if it's... It, if they can put the detail in, um, then that looks absolutely amazing. It really does. Well, the little tease that they did on Christmas Eve, because they did a tease of the whole J. I, I yes. lost, I lost yes. myself when I saw that. I, I, there was a reaction <laughs> video for that because I, I never in a million years expected the James Bond one eight vehicles to be coming out. No, no. But they did have yeah. like a, a DB five with the front uh, chain gun going round, and I thought, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But, uh, always a soft spot for me for the Lotus, though, definitely. Yeah, of all the cars, um, it, it's it's just that it's, it's the body. I mean, I've built the Lotus uh, loads of times as a kit, lots and lots of times. Uh, just the body shape, and it just looks fantastic. So, um, I, I think if if they're, again, if they're packing the detail, um, that's an absolute must for, for for most people. What else is on the list? Well, that's a very good question because you know, Bond and cars. Yeah, there's a lot out there which they could pick. There really no, is. There is. Um, I think so Vantage is one of them. Are, definitely. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, yeah. You know, of all the cars, if if I had uh, won the lottery, I'd probably buy uh, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> that's 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 the one I'd buy. Um, or the Invisible Vanquish. What do you reckon? Yeah, the Vanquish. <laughs> I love the Vanquish. I, I I I know it's it's probably not the best one to get. Yeah, but um, it it just looks amazing. Uh, yeah. Just absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, what's what else is coming? Of course, is uh, is very very interesting. Um, yeah. So it's a it, it is a rich a rich pot to, to sort of delve into. Uh, so um, everyone out there is listening to this. If you're a James Bond fan, uh, prepared uh, to, to spend lots of money on, on, the, on these, <laughs> on these part work bills, because there, are, there is potentially quite a lot uh, in the works, I believe. Well, before moving on, I'd like to talk to you all about a company that we've been working with Agora models, the home of big scale modeling. Agora Models has transformed the world of scale modeling since they launched, largely due to the company promise. The Agora promise is designed to re-establish trust that once a new model has been launched, it will not stop production until every part of the kit has been produced. The Agora Advantage Club rewards customers, giving members early access to new models, but importantly, ensures the customer care experience is world class. Whether you want to build a museum quality car, iconic vehicle, or love sci-fi and fantasy, there is a model in the Agora range ready for you. With exciting new models coming this year, including the first of the James Bond collection, if you have always wanted to build a model, Agora Models invites you to join a massive community of fellow scale modelers. Visit agoramodels.com to discover their ever-changing range of museum quality models. Uh, now, um, 
it's uh, it's time for our uh, guest, uh, which uh, which we have on on this episode. I think we mentioned it uh, in our uh, sort of um, outro uh, on the on the last episode uh, that we're uh, speaking to um, none other than uh, the modern supremo, uh, Mike Lane. Uh, well, welcome, Mike. Hi, hello, Mike. <laughs> welcome to me. the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pleasure. Well, thanks for joining us, sir, Mike. Um, as I said, this is a, a sort of our second episode, and um, we wanted to get a guest on as sort of as soon as uh, soon as possible. And um, you were kind of top of our list, really, to be honest. Uh, yeah, we really wanted to get you on. Wow, um, I'm honoured. <laughs> well, it, it's. It, I think your name is uh, is synonymous. I think with uh, with the sort of big scale models, with uh, with part working, and obviously uh, uh, the uh, the modding community. Um, I'd say that you were maybe a sort of a pioneer in that uh, in that respect, um, and have continued to be so. Uh, I think it's uh, it's something that uh, everyone kind of wants to get involved with. But I will have a conversation mm. about that, whether you mod or you don't mod. That's something that's uh, an interesting one uh, as well. Well, before we, uh, I guess, get into a conversation, uh, yeah, proper. Um, what, I'd like to ask you about your background. Um, I think we all know you from the the website and obviously uh, some of the blog posts which uh, which you've created. Um, but um, we, I, th- I think, we don't learn much about sort of Mike himself, your background, uh, how you came to to start uh, the, uh, the the website. So um, maybe a, maybe a potted history would be a good a good way to kick this off. Well, so um, I, I I was a graphic designer for fifteen plus years before this all started. Hmm. Um, and um and then back in 2016 uh, 17 i think it was the uh, delorean launched yep. the uh, part work and uh, i remember seeing the tv advert and i thought wow that looks that looks amazing you know and um i subscribed and then i cancelled and i subscribed again several times <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're to, not yeah so to, i think we, we all do yeah. that yeah <laughs> <laughs> trying to justify um um because it's one of those things you see the uh 199 mm-hmm. first issue don't you and yeah, uh, yeah. then you start crunching the numbers and you start thinking oh god no um but you know eventually took the plunge and uh started sort of building the model and uh and uh yeah it was a funny one for me because I, I i didn't really envisage changing the model much at all mm-hmm. at the time um i wanted to build it just you know just standard stock um but then the the more issues I, I built built through the, you know the more imperfections you'd see and the more things that were annoying me at the time and I thought you know I've got to I've got to improve this I've got to make some bits and pieces just uh, just for my own sanity. So Mike, so Mike, did you have any experience with model building in the past, or is this like your first delve into part works? That, that was the first part work. Mm-hmm. Um, that that I that I'd uh, build, but I mean I've been building models and things for years. You know, uh-huh. um, I've always sort of been hands on. Um, I've always been making, th- um, but this was the first part work for sure, um, and it was it just kind of felt different. Um, and obviously the scale and the die cast metal and everything else, it was it was pretty impressive. And um, but uh, and being as as expensive as it was, um, that's kind of why I was cautious about wanting to modify it in any way or touch it. You know, do you know what I mean? You just yeah, want to yeah. kind of keep it pristine. You don't want to touch it. But um, yeah, it's just it, it was just one of those things that um, sort of issue one. I saw the uh, number plate, and um, obviously the first thing that jumped to my mind was it should really have the barcode number plate from uh, Back to the Future. <laughs> Two sure, and yeah, um, yeah. so that was the first thing I made, and that was kind of just um, so it started as, as a hobby basically. Uh, I made that for my own model, had no intentions of it becoming a a business venture or anything like that. It was just made made a barcode number plate for my model, shared it on Facebook, and then obviously, uh, kind of the rest is history. Really, there um, people started requesting. The number plates from me so i thought okay i can make a few no problem at all and then a few became you know a hundred and <laughs> yeah. and so on yeah. and then uh, yeah. there i found myself working from my garage um you know so you make um, so you make these then, in-house then you uh or you don't outsource yes. your designs and anything like that no you? no it was all made in-house uh, wow. um all, all made from from my, my garage at the time and then uh outgrew my garage built a workshop in the garden uh uh-huh. Out, outgrew the workshop um and, and then moved to the to my new workshop which um is on my website which 
most yeah. people have probably seen. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of, uh, so, so I did that for a year uh, on the side of a, of a full-time job. Yeah, and you can imagine that's that that became difficult. Then it's hard because, to do. Uh, it's hard. Yeah, you're trying to juggle both sides. So, so after doing that for a year, I, just, I, I took this decision to uh, uh, go full time on on this, mm-hmm. and just um, uh, my claim mods as it is now was uh, officially formed in 2018, um, and it's kind of gone from strength to strength. So it all kind of started with the DeLorean build um, and just um, making making bits and pieces for my own model. And, and to be honest, that's where all of my mods start really, yeah. even now, um, you know, cause I'm building these models just like everyone else. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you spot things, don't you? And, you, and, yeah. uh, and, you know, I, I tend to, my mods tend to start by um, me just wanting to improve my own model and then I'll make them available for other people. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how it kind of all started. So, uh, do you find, do you find yourself building models that you wouldn't otherwise normally build knowing that there'd be a market for other people? Um, what well, now? Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Now, uh, I mean, back in the day, uh, with the DeLorean, obviously that was, uh, <clears throat> I was only building that model because I, I fancied that model, you know, yeah. so that I, you know, I love back to the future, but, but nowadays, um, yeah, I'm building more models that maybe I'm not quite quite as passionate about but um obviously i i I know people are going to want bits and pieces um i mean like the route master bus for instance i'm not you know terribly passionate about that model or that vehicle but it's still an impressive piece of kit it is and uh um but i mean my my sort of passion is still with the hero cars really and the movie cars you know the ecto one the delorean and and all of these um Night Rider, obviously. Um, I've still got a huge passion for that. I mean, I, I'm an '80s kid at the end of the day, so uh, you know, I grew, I grew up with these. Uh, yeah. So um, there's there's always going to be going to be models that I kind of jump into without thinking about. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's lots of models that people ask me to make things for, which I'm not. I'm still not too bothered about. I mean, the Terminator. I know you're building the Terminator. Yeah. We finished it now, I think, Wayne, haven't you? Yeah, we have. Um, yeah. But that was one. I was never really too bothered about that one, um, uh-huh. mostly because I wasn't sure where I'd put it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, me too. You know, it's, yeah, the, it's, me too. it's the bane yeah. of every model builder. <laughs> yeah, it's like really I'm not sure what the uh, yeah, yeah I'm not sure what the wife and kids are going to think if that's at the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> I have the same issue with uh, you know with the xenomorph. Um, it's an interesting one, but mm. oh, I can't know where to put that. Yeah, um, yeah and yeah, yeah. it would probably scare the cat. Never, never mind the wife. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think the Terminator is going to be uh, give me yeah. a flyer in, in this uh, in this house. Um, so so part working then was yeah. um, was kind of fortuitous for you. Then it kind of came along at just the right time. Um, yeah. And of course, the markets have expanded massively. So it was kind of a timing issue. You kind of got into it just at the right time. Yeah, it was. It was just um, just came along at the right time. Like I say, um, with the DeLorean, um, it just felt different to, to. I mean, I've built models for years, uh, plastic kit models, and uh, all sorts of different yeah. bits and pieces. But the for me, the DeLorean stood out as just so. Oh, this this is something different. This is something really exciting. Um, and do you think that's what's pushed pushed the market? Because everyone who either did build models decades ago, I think Wayne and I both returned to the hobby after about sort of a you know, thirty year break. Yeah. Um, do you think that's the case then? That there's certainly people that built uh, you know good old airfix kits back in the uh, yeah. back in the day um, mm-hmm. as one group. Another group that didn't have that experience at all, but still thought, mm, "I quite fancy building that." Can can I build that? Is it is it going to be possible? Because I have no model making experience at all. Could I actually build the thing as I've seen it in the in the advertisement? Um, so I think there's two groups of, of possible do, interest, people interested there. I, I think you can you can be a a part work modeler and still enjoy a plastic kits and vice versa, um, but they are very different beasts, aren't they? Um, yes, I mean, I, I've I've got I've bought a couple um, of the one eighth scale uh, Ravel plastic kits recently and it's a classic isn't it you see that you see the finished product on the front of the box <laughs> and it looks amazing and you open it up and it is all plain plastic and you think oh yep. god you know there is yeah, a yeah. lot of work to do here a lot of painting <laughs> and gluing you know yeah, which is obviously yeah. you don't have that issue with the part part work 
models. Um, yeah. But, you know, they're, they're different challenges, aren't they? I think it's a different proposition. Yes, it's it's a different proposition entirely. Um, uh, you're right, because I, I, um, I've been looking at sort of 112 scale um, F1 cars, for instance. Um, that kind of kit, massive kits, huge numbers of parts, probably take three months to build the thing. Uh, yeah, that, that kind of thing. Um, and they they kind of have an alloyed or a connection with uh, with part works and with large scale models. Um, I mean, I've had conversations with uh, plastic kit kit builders. They say, "Oh no, that's not model making. Go away. That's not model making. You know, you, you, that's that's not what the I guess the the perceived view of what a model maker should be. I.e., a plastic kit. Um, and I would absolutely disagree with that because if you're building something. It's it's still you are still a maker. You are. Um, I think you know there's different levels um, with with the plastic kits. You could argue you need a different level of of um, I wouldn't say expertise, but you know it, it takes a lot more work, doesn't it? Um, it's different different skill sets. I yeah, think, that's that's things. what I'm getting at, really. Um, but but at the same time, the part work models, even though they're designed to be easy to build, they're they're still not easy are they there's still a challenge no. it's still a challenge <laughs> issue 91 of the delorean yes, just still exactly. me. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't think there's any shape in, in that you know i don't think i think there is a crossover crossover um i think you you can still have uh, a decent amount of pride after finishing a part one model and, and uh you know it, it is an achievement isn't it yeah. um but you but they are they are different they are different things um but you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I've got I, I build both, and I still probably enjoy part work models more mm-hmm. than plastic. Oh, really? That's I, I do. Wow. Yeah, I, and and uh, for, you, you get a def, different level of achievement, I think, from uh, from building a, a plastic kit. There's a lot more work involved, painting and so on. Um, but you know, uh, I, I find the part works more enjoyable. Now, I wanted to also ask you, um, we've already touched on it a little bit, uh, you know, that perennial question about costs mm. and what these things actually cost us all. Um, I think this, this stuff's been debated pretty much since the, the, since, since the dawn of time when, yeah. when we're talking about palm works. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and I kind of, I don't really understand the view because you right. know what this thing's going to cost going into it. You, yeah. know, you can do the maths. Yeah. Um, so what's the issue with um, with with what it's going to cost you? Yeah, but, mm. yeah. Why why, mm-hmm. why is that an issue? Because you surely you know they're going in. Yeah. Um, I've had lots of conversations with people about that. Oh, I'd love to do that, but it's very very expensive, etc. Um, and it's 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 one of those conversations, I guess, that mm. is not going to go away. And these kits aren't going to go. Uh, they aren't going to get any cheaper, are they? They're probably going to get more expensive yeah. uh, over time. Mm-hmm. I, I would imagine because the way uh, the way things are yeah. at the moment. Um, so for you, when you're, I guess, building your uh, your mods, which of course also uh, um, obviously costs extra yeah. than what the actual model it, it costs as well, yeah. is that yeah. is that kind of front of mind for you? Are you thinking, well, it I'd is. like to do this modification, yeah. but when I've done the calculation, it's too expensive. I, yeah. I, no one will pay that kind of money to make that modification. So have you lots of stuff on your bench that you that really didn't see the light of day because 100%. the economics don't work? Hundred percent. There, there, there is only so much you can charge for. A modification at the end of the day. I mean, there's, lo- there's lots of things I've had planned uh, in the past um, where, like you say, they've not seen. Um... I say, don't tell us because we'll just cry. If it's something we really wanted, but, just don't don't tell us. Yeah, but but you, you know, if you're if you're building a twelve hundred pound model, you know, you can't really be spending four hundred pound, three hundred pound on a and on an individual mod. It's just it's just it just doesn't work out, does it? Um, there's lots of things like that, uh, but but however, I think you're right. I think you've invested if you've invested in this model so far, and you know it's mm-hmm. going to cost you over a grand. Sometimes I think, well, um, you know, you could argue you could build that part work model without any modifications, and it would still be impressive. But if you've yeah, already but you, if you've already invested over a thousand pound on this on this on this build, um, adding a couple of modifications to just make it perfect isn't pro- isn't the end of the world um and if it makes an okay model fantastic then it's worth it isn't it yeah definitely um, absolutely mm. do you get do you get much feedback from the uh the distribution companies like hasher and fan home about the mods that you're doing 
I always uh, it's something I always used to worry about actually back in the day because yeah. um, yeah, I used yeah. to think well yeah. how do how do these companies perceive me you know do yeah. they do they think well who is this guy coming along you know <laughs> modifying our models and, and you know and um, however I've never I, I've <clears> never um, I, I try not to offend them you know on my website yeah. I, I'm not there saying oh you know this this is this is this is terrible you need to buy this you know it, I, that's, I, our I, that's, I, that's our job that's our job to slag them um, off when we know it's, when we know something's yeah. rubbish that's our job there's a yeah. few things you know that you know come as a surprise sometimes you think why have they done that you know but like, but at the, the end of the day yeah, 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 exactly. oh, um, yeah, yeah. and uh, a few bits yeah. a few bits and pieces in the night rider you kind of think it's, you're scratching your head looking at it, i think i can't understand why they did that um, yeah. But at the end of the day, like I say, they're still fantastic models. Um, mm -hmm. I still think you can you can build them without modifying them, and they'd still be yeah. impressive. But um, but yeah, I did used to worry about that. But no, I've got relationships with um, with the publishers and uh, Agora Models. You know, they reach out to me. Yeah. Um, uh, Eagle Moss back in the day, uh, before they went bust, mm, uh, I had yeah, I had a good relationship yeah. with them. Um, and actually, I think they they the way they would prefer to work with modders like myself uh, because they okay. see, well, actually, um, you know, it, it can actually sometimes entice customers to, to build the model. Absolutely. If yes, yeah. Yeah. In fact, I was going to ask you that, Mike. Um, I, I wondered how, how that relationship worked, whether mm. you got um, these models in advance. No, I wish I did. You put, the, you put your yeah. mods out so <laughs> I I quickly. Did. Uh, no, yeah, I, I, sometimes no, I think, wow, you must have had that model on your bench for six months to get no, that modification no, ready. No, no. So but saying that, didn't you? Didn't you have the Knight Rider model advanced? Because you had carpets well, before I even got the stages for that. Yes, only because they yeah. uh, that model was released in France before gotcha. it hit ah. us in, in the UK. Yeah. So I, I, I had I a, yeah. a good friend in France who was shipping uh -huh. the bits gotcha. to, to me. Uh, for well over a year, um, but but no, no trade secret gone then, Mike. There you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, ordinarily, no, I don't have early access. Um, yeah. Wow. Oh, I do yeah. find that with playing devil's advocate with with these part work companies is that with licensing, I do know that they have to mm. get signed off on the model they're releasing. Yeah. So if they were to have something unofficial on there, they can't really push it because it hasn't been signed off with, and that's yeah. pretty much why I think they're happy with the way you're doing it, like you just mentioned there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but uh, but no, I'm, I'm building these models at the same time and pace that you guys are. And uh, wow. it's, it's quite often the case where people believe that maybe I've got advanced uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the parts in, in advance. But no, I don't. Um, and that can make it difficult sometimes when you're trying to, to help people out and produce parts uh, and modifications. Because obviously, if I, if I see an issue today, it could take me uh -huh. three months to design develop and produce yeah, a replacement indeed, part indeed. you know and then uh and then you're sat on that model for all that time aren't you uh, unable to build it i was going to say do you get do you get a lot of um uh requests for modifications then i do um uh -huh. i mean most of the um inspiration for the mods that i produce to be honest come from myself just building the model um yeah yeah uh, you know, I'll, I'll spot things just like everyone else does. Um, but I do get requests. Yeah. Um, I get customers asking and uh, begging and uh, <laughs> please, <laughs> yeah, please, Mike, you know, please tell me you're going to make something for this, you know? And uh, uh, so that's always, you know, quite helpful. Um, uh -huh. I, I always say if, if it's something that I'm not already producing or building, yeah. um, then uh, I, I quite often give them their first that first modification for free if they've come up with that idea, and uh, yeah. so people like Very that. Good. But... Now it may yeah. be me. It may be me. You will have to correct me if I'm wrong here. But yep. with the with the Night Rider build and the yeah. screens that you've done, that's your first sort of like go at electricals, isn't it? Or... It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a big uh, big move this year. Um, yeah. You know, obviously trying to move things forward um, and. and uh, explore new things uh, but yeah that absolutely first electric electronic modification for sure well wow. i have it to uh, have it here ready ready to go because <laughs> i I've, like i've literally sat on all of night right i haven't built a thing i have box yeah. after box after box in my workshop yeah um, because i learned a lesson with a delorean figure out which mods you think are going to come along and i thought yeah there's going to be some kind of dashboard i know there is yeah wait until you've got all the mods 
then start your build. Yeah. Uh, because I had a nightmare had, had put, fitting, fitting the flux capacitor into the DeLorean, trying to get that thing to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was an absolute yeah. nightmare because I'd finished it pretty much. Um, so my, I think my advice is if you, if you are going to mod something, try mm. and get the mods first and then, you know, uh, do it as you go. Um, Definitely. As Mike, as Mike knows, I had to take the Knight Rider apart oh, to put that yeah. mod in. But you know what? I'm so glad I did it because yeah. it, it just makes such a difference. I, um, mm. yeah, yeah. I, I think you took one for the team there, Wayne. Yeah. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> did you it was it? one of those things where I see it lying yeah. in front of me and screws yeah, everywhere yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and you have yeah, that right, nagging yeah. thought saying, can yeah. I put this back together? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I had a yeah. nightmare. All I put everything back together. Yeah, I thought, okay, here we go. Power's on. Switch it on. Is it going to work? And thank the Lord, mm-hmm. it all worked. I was so oh, yeah. happy that it all yeah, worked. It doesn't it always work that device. way, though, does it? I mean, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> well, in fact, well, that's something I want to ask you, Mike, um, because I think Dory uh, is coming again. Is it often the case that things will shift and move? That the 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 modifications, obviously, you built for uh, you know the first version. Do you um, how are you concerned that the the mods say uh, would fit the next version, the next version, the next version? Do you spend some time checking that you know uh, the uh, fan hub hasn't changed apart or something hasn't moved a millimeter? Well, this is the this is the problem. I, I mean, I'll never really know until I get the parts yeah. uh, in hand. Uh, it's 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 a pro, it's a it's always a bit of a risk, um, but I try not to offer things unless I know for sure they're going to fit. You know, uh, I had the I had the same issue with the Hot Toys DeLorean um, because oh, the, yeah. the yeah. because the original DeLorean Hot Toys DeLorean came out probably three, four, maybe even five years ago now, sure. and they've just re-released the Back to the Future Two version with the hover hover mode. Yeah, uh, and I'd already previously made a ton of modifications for that first hot toys delorean and i'm there thinking i'm, I'm just hoping and praying they all fit this new this new delorean well i'm, um, I'm, I'm glad you said that mike because one of yeah. our listeners john fairbrother had actually emailed me mm. to ask that question about the hot toys yeah. delorean so you've just answered that <laughs> yeah they, well, yeah they, they do fit <laughs> but yeah. yeah i had to um i had to obviously purchase that model myself get it in get it yeah. in the workshop test for everything first before I, I, but i mean there's you know there's an element of element of guesswork there but at the same time you kind of think well they've already made all the molds for these parts for this for this big delorean there's only so much they're going to change you know so when it comes to um for instance i made some carpet sets for the first uh hot toys delorean i couldn't at the time i couldn't imagine they would possibly change all of the moldings for the inside of the delorean that would be a massive expensive task for them to do do you know yeah um so there's always that sort of hope that well yeah they but these should fit um but yeah um in terms of the delorean I, I, again i can't imagine they would change it much they've already got all the tooling the moldings I, i'd be very surprised if it's if it's any different to what we had from Egomos. I was going to say the other thing is that um, with mm. with, with uh, models coming back out again, and we are seeing that. Yeah. Obviously, we know the events of what happened with Eagle Moss and how that hurt the uh, the community yeah. in as whole. But now seeing all those models coming back under a new guise, it's opening mm. it up to a new um, generation of the community, if you like. So uh, those models Definitely. and the mods are always going to be sort of wanted which is a good thing rather than yep. if it was just a one-off thing and you make a mod once that whole flow curve has gone you uh yeah you're left with a well, mod that no one wants well, anymore is, because no one's building it 100 percent. i mean um again back in the day when i when i first started doing this i thought well uh, there is a shelf life to these mods because obviously once people have finished a model they're not going to need them again you know yeah. but but back when eagle moss were were still around um it, it always surprised me you know because i mean i mean like yourself wayne you finished the delorean how many years ago oh that was I back when the millennium but, that's when we first started so it was a long long time ago uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> um but, but people were still interested you yeah. know people yeah, were still yeah. buying buying modifications for the delorean so they were still subscribing um years mm. after a lot of people had finished um mm. so i'm really pleased to see that the uh, deloreans come back in fairness, when, when we, what you just said there, yeah. though, Mike, I think that mm. a lot of people's resistance to buying part work models is they never get to see a finished one. And when the Millennium Focus got finished and the DeLorean got finished, you notice that the curve of how many part works become available after that became a hell of a lot more. And I'm wondering if that's it, that people actually see yeah, what you get point. for your money. I, I think you're probably right. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
that's quite funny. I mean, I've, most of my models, uh, I mean, I, I, I have kind, kind of man cave envy when I look at your models, Wayne, because <laughs> most of my models are unfinished because I keep pulling them apart all the time. Uh, my, but, my, my wife um, would beg to differ because <laughs> they're encroaching <laughs> on her space now, apparently. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I almost need to subscribe twice, to be honest. I need one to work on yeah. and pull apart yes. and then one to actually just build and finish. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it all adds up, though. Well, what would you like to see yourself, uh, Mike? If, uh, is there a part with that you'd absolutely love to, to oh, see God. in the marketplace? Um, yeah, right, well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, is, is, is there one or two? Hands we... down, an 18 van. <laughs> Everyone's after the 18 van or uh, an Airwolf. Airwolf and yeah, 18 van. It always comes yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> um, General Lee would be another good one. Uh -huh, um, Lee, yeah. But uh, I just think, you know, you've got, you got the Ecto one. You've got the Knight Rider. You have got Deloitte. It just needs the A Team van. Um, you can see I, you've I got, you've definitely got a genre there. You can see you're definitely eighties yes. there. I'm wondering what what about definitely. the the Auto Man blip as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Cursor, wasn't um, it? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, but Airwolf, yeah, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, no, definitely. Even Blue Thunder, actually. <clears throat> Yeah, I preferred uh, Blue Thunder. That's that's controversial, but I preferred the Blue Thunder helicopter to Airwolf. Yeah, yeah. Um, but with the eighteen vans, yeah, I'm not aware of many big scale eighteen vans out there. No. Um, you can buy the Hot Wheels uh, Elite versions, which are I can't remember what scale they are now, but nothing anywhere near one eight scale, or one six scale. Um, mm -hmm. I think that would be awesome. Um, the other thing I wanted to uh, sort of sort of get into is, um, I guess how the the marketplace has changed as well. We, I mean, we talk uh, well, obviously we call these things part works. Um, yeah. It's clearly a trend, isn't it, towards um, I guess reducing the time frame. I think a lot of people go, "Oh, it's going to cost me a grand. Hey, it's going to take three years to build this thing. Oh, you know, that's a long, long time. Um, can we shorten that?" And that's absolutely happening in the marketplace, isn't it? Uh, you can buy. Mm -hmm very short um, uh, pack times now, you know, a year, uh, and even buy entire kits. The whole thing you know, gets delivered to, to you in a huge crate, and off you go. Um, I think that's an interesting change in the marketplace, how people want to embrace, um, I guess, what uh, plastic helps, plastic kits are like, because you know, it's, in, it's, in, you know, it's entirety is there in the box. Can we do that for, for, you know, for part working? Um, yeah. And that's an interesting change, I think, and how people want to, want to sort of buy these things. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a funny one, really, isn't it? Because I mean, the, for me, the whole appeal of a part partwork model is that you do build it over bit of a time, yeah. two or three years. I think that's the whole idea of it, really. But but then I I, I bought complete kits before from De Um I bought a complete um, Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. And I've okay. still not yeah. I've still not built it. It's still I do find it overwhelming when you do get the yeah. whole kit. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it's, it, and I don't think it's as fun, to be honest. I think, yeah. you know, there's a, there's an appeal to obviously have everything there in one go. I get it. Um, but having a few issues drip fed through the letterbox kind of every every few weeks, so there's, there's something cool about that. Yeah. Uh, and, you, and, you, and you don't know what's coming next either, do you? And there's, a, that, that, there's that excitement. And, and obviously you spread the cost over uh, two, yeah. three years as well, which yeah. obviously with the complete kits, it's a lot of money up front, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so I don't think it suits everyone. Um, maybe the people that are buying complete kits they are absolutely from a plastic model background um, <laughs> you know, that's an experience they, they want the whole thing so I can sit down build it start to finish however long it's going to take uh, you know, literally do sort of do binge modelling as I call it <laughs> I agree yeah I, I, I get it um, and it was possibly sort of inevitable wasn't it with the whole certainly in recent times with the Egomoss situation that maybe more and more complete kits are going to come out now um, yeah. Do you think that wobbled think... the market? Do you think um, everyone uh, from from us builders all the way through to all the companies in the marketplace? Do you think that was it a wake up call that these things aren't um, you know a, a fantastic business model for some people? Was there some sort of issues with the marketplace? Issues with logistics? Is it a very fragile business? Um, I'm very interested because obviously you're immersed in the business. Um, mm. If if it did it did it. Did it sort of sound a sort of uh, when warning bells that oh um, yeah there might be something something interesting happening in this marketplace? Let's see how this actually shakes out. Yeah, um, I mean, I know, I know when I first subscribed to my first part work, which was the Delorean, as we've already discussed. But I remember thinking the same even back then, which was what what happens if this model never gets completed? Mm. You know, yeah. what happens if 
this company goes bust. But you, you kind of try and reassure yourself and you think, oh, that surely can't happen. And when it did actually happen, that was it kind of sent a bit of a shockwave through the community, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, I know for me, I mean, when I found out, um, it, it was a it was a big shock. Um, that was that was a difficult few months, really, because I had to kind of uh, review everything that I was doing, um, and uh, it it was uh, it was shocking. Uh, I mean, people had uh, I, I I was getting. Uh, messages from customers saying i've just put down a whole load of money for this model and they've just gone you know I, I've, I've paid up front and i've not received one issue um so i i don't know if maybe that's got something to do with maybe why some uh, some of these companies are now offering more complete kits maybe than I think I think a lot of companies are now moving to this subscription based model system. And that's the reason for that is, is obviously then it's order. They they already know the orders before the things are produced. And I think it takes about six weeks uh, time to actually get the order, to get it made, to get it shipped, to get it back. And I think that's more secure than the whole news agents are doing it by just printing a load and hoping they'll sell. So, yeah, I, I, th- I certainly think people are maybe more twitchy now than they used to be. Yeah. And understandably. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know. You just got to hope and pray that that never happens again. Yeah. Well, I'm on my like 26th model. So, uh, you know, so I think I think we're over that, actually, if we count some of the, the figurines that I've done as well. But the uh, uh, if, if that's a testament to, uh, you know, things come into completion, then the, you've got it there. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, I think um, uh, I think we've got, I think I've got a couple of things uh, left on, on this one, uh, uh, Mike. Um, I wanted to ask you about your process. Um, you, you've said something. I want to improve. Uh, I want to do this thing to this this model. Yeah. What, what's your process? How do you approach that? Because I, I've read often that you these things are handmade. You'll source um, you know, various uh, various materials. I'm particularly thinking of the. Um, uh, the mod for um, the uh, the bonnet mod for uh, for the DeLorean. I think that was real wood. It had plastic in there. Lots of different materials. How, how do you actually approach this? Well, I'm going to make that part, but how do you make it? How do you physically go from yeah, that's the design to to something in a in a bag that I can buy? Yeah, I mean it it, it can be a bit of a uh, a, log- a logistical nightmare sometimes. Um, <laughs> I mean, certainly with like my ecto kits, for instance, the uh, resurrected mm. ecto kits that I produce. I mean, there's so many parts in there, um, so many different materials, and uh, yeah, the majority of it is all all handmade and you know made by myself in the workshop. Um, but you've, I mean, there's there's lots of things to consider. You know, not not everyone likes gluing things to their models, so sometimes yeah, you know sure. I try where I can to try and make it so it's easy to install and reversible. Um, that's a big consideration. You know, um, uh, but but most of the time where, where it starts is, is if I spot something that I think maybe needs improvement, it can then sometimes spiral because when you start looking at that, um, you start noticing other things. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's That's a, a rabbit like, hole uh, you don't want to go down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but no, quite often you, you, you start looking at one thing and then you start noticing another thing and another thing and another thing. And uh, I mean, I've, I've had that problem with the uh, night Rider at the moment where you go to make one improvement and that one improvement then starts, <laughs> and, you know, becoming a, a, a massive mod in the end and a massive project and it can just take time. But um, uh, yeah, it, no, it's not a straightforward process though. Um, I no, mean, I've no. got... I was just fascinated by you know, some of the materials I see on the mods. Um, you know, you, I imagine you say, oh, I'm going to build that part. Okay, fine. Um, I can do the design, but then what material would it be made out of? So you try one material, it doesn't work, try something else that works, or you could be three or four different attempts at the material before it actually gives you the finish you want, I imagine. Um, because I think because the, the perception can be, oh, it's all just 3D printed in China, isn't it? And that's absolutely not the case. No, it isn't. No, I mean, I mean pretty much all, it's very, very little do I have made overseas. There's a couple little bits that I do because I just have to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the majority of it, I, I make myself um, by hand. Which we, no one can, but no one can believe that because the amount of stuff you're putting yeah. through the, it's like it's all. How, how can you? You must have a staff of. You must have like five hundred people making no. these things. <laughs> well, well, do you know, for, for probably the first four years, I, I was literally on my own. Wow. It was just me. Wow. Uh, I had no help whatsoever. It's unbelievable. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, but for the, uh, for, 
uh, beginning of 2022, um, I did finally cave in and get some help. <laughs> and uh, I've now got two people working for me in the workshop. But but that's only been possible because I've got uh, sort of a bigger workshop now. Yeah, you know, I could some... never do that. I, I couldn't do that before because I was working from home um, in the garden, pretty much, <laughs> uh, you know, in my shed. Um, but now I've got a bigger workshop, I can actually get some help in and, uh, but just, you know, just packing and, uh, getting posts out and things like that helps me because, uh, that, that becomes a full-time job. Yeah. Oh, tell, tell me about it. Yeah. Uh, it just is, um, everybody, every small business person goes through that two in the morning yeah. stuffing boxes thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everyone does uh, that. Absolutely. Um, but, but certainly this year, a bit, a big thing has been, um, the 3d printing um because i've never been a massive fan of 3d printing to be honest oh, okay. um because because in my eyes it's never it's never been good enough yeah um, sure. you can always see sure. you can always see layer lines you sure. can always tell when something's been 3d printed yeah um but within the last or sort of, even the last year or two it's come along so much and so far um where you, you can look at these parts now um and you can you know you you don't think it was injection molded yeah yes um um i i, I mean i go to the obviously the big uh, 3d print uh, show in fact it's next month oddly enough in uh, in birmingham tct and uh, every year the innovation is just bonkers it's also the speed how how fast it's moved forward you know 8k printers yep. now you can print in uh, any kind of metallized material at all yep. as you say you would never know that wasn't uh, traditionally made uh, no. in, in some cases yeah exactly so i mean i it's only really been this year for me that i've invested in the 3d printing side of things mm. um great for prototypes yeah, um yeah, yeah. yeah still not always great for actual finished parts i think yeah. um but uh it depends where it is on the model um like for the for instance the, the mount that um did you say you had my screens david i think you did, didn't did you? yeah the map yeah so the mount uh that holds the screens and that's all 3d printed wow. oh, and, okay. and right. it looks but right. it almost looks injection molded does, yeah. and it's hidden underneath yeah, the dash yeah. uh, it's really strong it's a really sort of high quality abs resin um really really strong you know it's not going to snap um and uh so that's so that's been a kind of a big move this year interesting yeah 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 um anything else from you uh, uh wayne before we uh, before we close uh no i think you've answered everything which is brilliant it's been an insight of uh, uh what you do <laughs> because as i said i've i've known mike since the world of wayne channel started and yeah. we haven't mm. actually physically spoken it's always been no, through emails i know so. i feel bad <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll have to uh take a visit up to your way oh, definitely when i'm down your point. way soon i'm yeah. down your way in august Oh, brilliant. So, uh, well, there we go. My first time down, yeah, to, down in the southwest. It should be fun. There you go. <laughs> oh, we'll have to we'll have to make a date. Mm-hmm, there, definitely. definitely. Super. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, um, I think we've probably come to the uh, to the end uh, uh, of this conversation, uh, Mike. Um, I'd just like to close, but I guess I guess asking you about the future, um, how you feel your, yep. your business is going to develop, what's what's coming. Um, you know, what, what do you think uh, you know, um, you know, um, Mike Lane is going to look like uh, maybe in a few years time? Um, yeah. You know, what's uh, what's up your sleeve? Well, it's, I'm, I'm pretty excited to be on there. So I've got lots in the works. Um, I've got uh, plans to look at new models I've not even had time to look at yet. I mean, there's loads of models from publishers like Agora Models. Good. And uh, uh, you've got some of the big Hot Toys 1.6 scale models as well. Really want to kind of get my teeth into. Yeah. Um, there's so many, so many models I want to I want to work on. Um I mean, I've got probably two, three years worth of work ahead of me just on some of the models I've got wow. at the workshop already. Um, but no, it is exciting times. It's just uh, I'm just uh, currently just looking to expand out into some different areas, different models. Um, a lot of people know me for the DeLorean and the Ecto One, um, but I mean, there's so many uh, Wayne yeah. knows <laughs> so many, so many more models than that. Um, but uh, I mean, I, I, I mean. I, I'd like to build a second kit, for instance, um, like as car. Yeah. Uh, so I really want to build a second kit, work on car. That, that's that's kind of one of my goals this year. Um, but no, there's some there's some really there's some exciting models coming out, um, which which look great. I mean, you have got the one uh, six Batmobile coming mm-hmm. uh, from Hot Toys. Um, I I'm not sure if you if you really 
got into the hot toys side of things. I, way, I, you, I haven't, or... although I have seen them, and it's one of these things that you yeah. know that I'd love them all, but uh, <clears throat> I, I live with a yeah. wife who doesn't want them all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are big. Yeah. They are big. Um, big yeah. But, yeah. Um, but uh, that's kind of that's what I'm excited about. It's just some of the different models and different vehicles that are coming out. Um, and uh, and obviously continuing to work on the Ecto One as well. So, so now that's been resurrected and revived yeah. by Fan Home. Thankfully, I'm so happy for everyone that they're actually going to be able to finish their model finally. Um, that's great news. But I want to kind of turn my attention back to that as well. Um, but yeah, so so lots of plans, lots of plans. Super. Um, okay, Mike, I think we'll uh, probably leave you there. So, um, well, uh, thanks thanks again, Mike, for, for coming on to this, uh, I guess, the, our first uh, guest slot. I think that conversation has been um, absolutely fantastic. Learned a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, really, a really great to sort of get uh, get an insight into uh, one of the leading sort of modding mm. companies uh, yeah, for, for, our, uh, for our models. Uh, hopefully we can uh, we can speak again uh, this speaking soon. Absolutely. Definitely. Well, thank you for inviting me in. Yeah, brilliant. So as I said, that's uh, that's all for from us uh, for uh, for for this episode. So it's it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from Wayne. Take care, everyone. See you later. The Scale Model World Podcast.